Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the Ramadan edition. Inshallah, your Ramadan is going well and you had a very, very good uh, Laylatul Qadr. Inshallah, you remembered me and the Sheikh in your du'as, Inshallah. And now we are approaching Eid. Most of you will be busy with your uh, preparations for the Yom Al-Eid, Inshallah. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me as always is Sheikh Ali Ma'a. Assalamu alaykum, Sheikhna. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Sheikhna, we were talking about Zakat al-Fitrah last time in our discussion. Um, I have a few questions in regards to that, and is that is, you were saying that the zakat has to be paid quite um, soon. I mean, can you not pay the zakat al fitrah later on? Can you not delay the payment? A'udhu billah as-sami'al alim min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin. With regard to the zakat al fitrah. Um, as I've mentioned in the previous episode, it must be prepared and um, be ready by the eve of the Eid al-Fitr and paid by the morning um, before the Salat of uh, Eid, which I'll mention later on. So basically, if somebody delays the payment for any reason, you know, un unable to reach to the centers or Islamic centers or the alim and so forth, um, it becomes wajib and obligatory on him to make sure that the zakat al-fitr reaches those who are in need uh, as soon as he can. So delaying without purpose, you know, is not accepted. So that you have to make sure that you, you um, deliver this um, zakat to those who are in need and waiting for it. So it's wajib to, to hasten the um, payment. payment of the zakat to those who are in need. What if somebody forgot? Maybe someone was really, really busy with the Eid preparations. Um, there was plans to you know, uh, travel to another country to go see family. Um, and and just, he just got caught up in the moment. And he, he honestly, you know, he had the intention of paying, but he, he honestly forgot. He sincerely forgot. Um, is he allowed to pay it back later on or does he wait for the next year and pay double? Well, they can still pay it, of course. It's wajib on them. However, they pay it with the intention of qurba, qurbatan illah ta'ala. They pay it and they try as soon as possible to make sure that um, this amount is reached to um, that poor person or people who are in need. And Shaykh, what about uh, having people, you were saying that you know, if people come to your house and they're under your roof uh, between you know, the, just before the Maghrib Adhan and, and into the night, if there is an unborn child, let's say someone's wife's pregnant, and heavily pregnant, as in you know, final stages, eight months, nine months pregnant, that child, does that actually count as a person that the zakat has to be paid upon? Well, the unborn child who was not born um, before the Eid al-Fatr, the eve of the Eid al-Fatr, and let's say that mother remains um, pregnant even after the Eid, then they don't have to pay any zakat fatr for the unborn child. No, there's no zakat for them. Asal. Shaykhna, you were saying that you know, when we give the zakat al-Fatr, it should go to the mu'mineen and it should go to the poor mu'mineen. Uh, you also discussed about, you know, there's issues with sayers and non-sayers, so the right money has to go to the right people. What if there are no Shia in this area? Where I live, there's no poor Shia. Alhamdulillah, everyone's actually quite well off and doing well. Lakin, there are some mukallifin who are struggling and, and may need our help. Is it jaiz for us to give the zakat of fitrah to them? Well, the Sayyid says that um, it is allowed to be given to the mustaf'af of the non-Shia, those who are unaware of the Shia belief, the, the wulai of Ahlul Bayt, they are living in remote areas, never, know, n never knew about the, the haq, the truth. Uh, and um, in overall, 
the message has not been reached to, to, to them, the, the true message of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam and Islam, the true Islam of Ahlul Bayt. Um, in this case, with the absence of the poor Shia of Ahlul Bayt, the, who, who are uh, following Ahlul Bayt and they are Shia and they are poor, with their absence, then you can give it to them, that's fine. So can, can you be more specific as in like, oh, they, they didn't know or they were unaware? I mean, so if there is someone who is poor and requires such charity, but he knows about the Ahlul Bayt, he knows about the Shia, he knows what they talk about and their claims, he doesn't accept what well, we can't give, uh, we can't help that brother out? Well, according to the Sayyids, um, he mentions that he must be Mustaba'af, a person who is unaware of the truth, as I've said. But those who know, then we have to avoid it, of course. Those who try to debate us and to refute our evidences and proofs, no, we have to avoid them. Um, because mainly zakat is paid to those who follow Ahl al-Bayt And in such case, yes, we can pay to those who are in need and they are Mustaba'af of non-Shia, of Ahl al-Khilaf, then that should be okay. Ahsan. Shaykhullah, let's move our conversation now to the day of Eid. And also we know that a lot of us have to wake up very, very early in the morning in order to reach the, the prayer, the famous uh, Turaqat prayer. This prayer itself, is this prayer wajib or is it mustahab? Well, with regard to the Eid uh, prayers, um, be it Eid al-Fitr or Eid al-Abha, now, the Salat al-Eidain, and let's, we talk about the Eid al-Fatr, is wajib in the presence of the Imam al-Ma'asum alayhi salam. And we speak about the Imam al-Hujj al-Muntadar ajallah farajahu al-Sharif, wa nahnu ma'ah. In his time, when he appears, it becomes wajib. Okay. So uh, the Salat al-Eid becomes wajib when there is a Ma'asum, when there is an infallible Imam within the people. Ahsan Shaykh. So you're saying at the moment it's not wajib until the Imam comes, the Imam Asum is present, then it is wajib upon all to actually participate in this prayer. For now, can we say it's mustahab and can we pray farada or it has to be in jama'ah? Yes, in this case, in the time of the disappearance and the ghaybah of Imam Ajallah Farajah al Sharif, in his occultation, we pray it as mustahab. And um, it's better to be done in jama'ah. So, although we don't have um, mustahab prayers to be prayed in jama'ah except the Eid al-Fatr and Eid al-Adha um, um, as a salah jama'ah, as a mustahab prayers. So, we pray them as jama'ah and also we can pray them as furada. Shaykhna, what time should this prayer be prayed? Should it be connected with any other salah? You know, should we pray after Fajr, pray Fajr first, and then straight away pray this uh, prayer? Or is it within a certain time period, this three or four hour gap that you should pray it here? Can you pray it in the afternoon, in the evening? The most that I attend has uh, three timings. There are three jama'ah, depending on which one you can make, there's, there's three timings to attend. Is that allowed? Is that acceptable? Well, the timing of Salat al uh, be it... Uh, the Fatr or the Abha, it begins from the sunrise, not the, uh, the, the dawn or the Fajr okay, time. Fajr Allah, the dawn, from, from the sunrise, you can begin uh, praying Salat al Eid. Up to the midday, the noon time, Adhan al Dhuhr, exactly. Oh, okay. So you have this five, six hours, let's say, of time period where you can pray Salat al Eid, and that's what we see. Wherever you go to the Islamic centers, mosques, the shrines of Ahlul Bayt السلام, you see that they repeat the Salat al Eidain till just before the Adhan al Dhuhr. So they stop almost 20 minutes, half an hour before the Adhan al Dhuhr. They prepare for the Adhan. They read Quran, for example, and then Dua, okay. and then they start the Adhan al Dhuhr. So they try to make sure that everyone attends it because if it's mustahab and desirable act on the day of Eid, uh, that all people gather and um, share this, this joy of fasting the whole month and gaining the benefits and bounties from this uh, great month. So they pray it in jama'ah, um, uh, which is mustahab, and they have the time till the Adhan of Dhuhr. Shaykhna, how do you perform such a prayer? As in, are there specific 
surahs that must be recited and specific du'as or is it quite flexible as in you can pick and choose which du'a you'd like to recite, which surah you'd like to recite? Salat al-Eid is basically made of two rak'ahs mainly. In the first rak'ah, um, after reading the hamd and surah, you begin to do five takbirat. And after each takbirah, you begin with the du'a. The du'a of the day of the Eid in the prayer, in which you read the du'a, for example, Allahumma ahl al-kibriya'i wal-azamah wa ahl al-jud wa al to the end of the du'a. So in each takbirah, when you finish the takbirah, Allahu Akbar, you raise your both hands for the qunut. And you begin to read the dua, which is I just mentioned at the beginning of it. And then you say Allahu Akbar. And again, second takbir, up to the fifth takbirah, um, you read the, uh, the, du the dua in the qunut. And then afterwards you say Allahu Akbar and you go to the rukur. So that's the first rak'ah. The second rak'ah is only four takbirah. Again, after the reading of Surah Al-Hamd and Surah, uh, you raise your both hands, and again you read the Dua of the Eid, and till the fourth Takbirah. So you do four Takbirah, after each Takbirah, the Dua, and then when you, when you finish the fourth Takbirah and the Dua, and then you do the Takbir, and you go to the Rukur and Sujood, and you finish your Salat Al-Eid. As simple as that. Um, with regard to reading which surahs, initially it is the mustahab prayers and um, you're allowed to choose any surah. But the ones which are better mentioned in the Rasal Amali of the Sayyid to read, um, the first option is to read Surah Al-Shams in the first rak'ah, wa shamsi wa duhaha. And in the second rak'ah, to read Surah Al-Ghashiyah, Hal Ataka Hadith al ghashiyah or the second option, what to read in these two surahs, is to read um, for the second option in the first rak'ah, Surah Al-A'la, Sabbih Ism Rabbika Al-A'la. And the second rak'ah, to read Surah Al-Shams, again, wa shams wa duha. So it's your option, your choice, to either to choose the first option of the surahs or the second option. It's up to you. Okay. That's it. Shaykh, what about uh, the khutbah at the end? Is this actually part of the prayer itself? Or is it just tradition? Or is this actually mandatory that you uh, there is a khutbah after the, the prayer? Well, it is mustahab um, in the time of the occultation of the Imam, Ajjallah Farajuh al-Sharif and his ghaybah, um, for the Imam who is leading the prayers, the Eid prayers, to read two khutbahs, khutbatain. And to mention in that khutbah the ahkam of the uh, zakat al-fitra and so forth. And of course, if you, if I'm sure you've seen that uh, between two khutbah they sit down. So it's mustahab to sit down to yes. have a short break. Mm -hmm. And then the imam stands up again and he um, resumes the second khutbah and reads the second khutbah. So that's mustahab in overall to have the two khutbah read, um, read by the imam or by anybody else, even the khutbah could be read by the imam who leads the prayers, or anybody else, you know, who can come forward and speak. Let's say the imam um, is only speaks Arabic or Farsi, and you bring somebody who speaks English okay. to read the khutbah. So that's fine, that's fine. It's up to the, uh, the center itself or the mosque itself to decide who reads the khutbah. Ascent. And do we have to actually stay for the khutbah? Can we like do the prayer and start to leave? Or do you think that, no, you must stay to complete the, the prayer? The whole process of Salat al-Eid is mustahab. So it's up to you. You want to stay, you, know, you want to go, it's, it's up to you. But these are all part of the Salat al-Eid, the khutbah itself. Ahsan. And also, Shaykhna, being a mustahab prayer, does it actually require wudu? Of course. One of the conditions, the main conditions of Salat al-Eid, or the mustahab salah, is to have uh, wudu and to be in purity. Again, the same uh, conditions for uh, the wudu you mentioned, uh, the Salah we mentioned, everything also covers the Salat al-Eid as well. Ahsan, Shaykh. Shaykh, I've also noticed that before this, um, this prayer is read, there's also, there's, there's no Adhan, and also there's Takbirat. Can you explain a little bit about this? Yes, basically because it's a Mustahab prayers, um, there is no Adhan for it, for, for Salat al-Eid. So the Imam who comes to lead the, the, the prayers, 
would say as salah as salah as salah mm -hmm. as a call for the prayer of Salat al Eid. And then you have something before, uh, prior to the start and the commence of Salat al Eid, and even the Sayyid said it's mustahab that you do this after the Salat of Maghrib and Isha of the eve of the Eid. So okay. the night before the Eid. It is mustahab um, to say these takbirat, as you mentioned, and also to say these takbirat after Salat al Fajr in the morning, oh. early morning. Yeah. So when you pray Salat al Fajr, to say these takbirat. And, um, and then even the Sayyid says, وَكَذَا بَعْدْ صَلَاةِ عِيدِ الْفَطْرِ Even after the Salat Eid al-Fatr, to say these takbirat, mustahab. Uh -huh. To say, for example, uh, the following takbirat, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd, Alhamdulillahi ala ma hadana, Walahu shukru ala ma awlana. Mustahab to say it. Uh, okay, as so said. it's like a little dhikr and you continuously say it. Exactly. Okay. I'm sure you've seen this when you go to the mosque or the center and they sit before the uh, salat of, of Eid. Yes. They wait the imam to come. They start to, uh, uh, recite. to, to recite this takbirat together, for example. It's mustahab. Ahsan. In overall. Ahsan. And Shaykhna, where should the salat uh, of Eid, where should it be prayed? Is there any recommended area for it to be prayed in? Well, the mustahab here, as the Sayyid mentions in his Risala, that it's mustahab that you perform Salat al-Eid in the desert. In, in a, oh, wow. In open land, in oh, other words. Okay. So, where, you know, you have open, open sky. Oh, in other, okay. in other words. Because we do, in, I know in London, we do have prayer in the park. Exactly. And a lot of people exactly. will do it. They exactly. invite everyone to the park. Exactly. And have the Eid prayer in the park. Yeah, to pray it somewhere in open land, that's mustahab. Okay. But it doesn't mean that you can't pray it in the mosque or in Islamic center yes. with the ceiling covered, you know. No, that's fine. It's just mustahab. It's just for the more rewards that you, you, you'll get Ascent. Ascent. if you pray in and open space. Is there, other, is there any other mustahabat in regards to the salah? And of course, mustahab, one of the main mustahabat is to do ghusl of the Eid. Before going to the salat al Eid, you do ghusl, ghusl yawm al Eid. And you go out to the Eid prayers with purity and with pure heart, of course, after fasting the whole month of Ramadan. Okay, Shaykhna, um, any last words or any advice, a message you'd like to give to uh, the people, the viewers? Initially, may Allah accept all the deeds in this holy month of Ramadan and may Allah give us the opportunity for the ne next coming years. This tawfiq that we gain the opportunity to fast again every, every year, inshallah, inshallah with, with complete and full health, inshallah. bodily and mentally and spiritually, inshallah. inshallah. And we have to learn a lot from this holy month that we um, refrain from the haram, we refrain from the bad manners, and practice uh, morality and better akhlaq. Inshallah. And uh, we try to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we uh, accept our amal and deeds. Uh, with the barakah of Salat Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Ascent. Allahumma salli. Ascent, Shaykhna. Thank you very much, Shaykhna. Thank you for everything. Thank you to all the viewers for joining us on Ihkam SOS, uh, the Ramadan special. Inshallah, this Ramadan edition we benefited you and helped you with your fasting. Inshallah, and wishing you all, uh, from myself and from um, Shaykh, uh, a very, very glorious, a very, very uh, prosperous Eid. Inshallah, and may all your amal be accepted. Inshallah. Inshallah, Ahqam SOS will be back with a new series with myself, Mohsin Shah, and Sheikh Ali Maas, Inshallah. Until then, Assalamu Alaikum Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh.